Hey, what's up everybody? It's Casey the Rockstar Flipper coming back at you with another video on a, another Sunday afternoon slash evening. Uh, it is November the 20th, 2016. We're almost to December. We're getting close, guys. Uh, and we always talk about a lot of good things, a lot of sales, a lot of positive things. And tonight I'm going to talk about something a little different. I'm going to talk about negative things. And negative by the biggest mistakes that I see people make and I used to make a long time ago on eBay. And I want to talk about 10 of the top, the 10 biggest mistakes I see consistently. I get emails, questions, and comments referencing these mistakes, uh, telling me they made the mistakes, how to fix them, or just letting me know that these are things that I should look out for. Um, and all 10 of these are things that I have either done myself or I have been a part of or I have seen personally and I want to make sure that you guys do not make these same mistakes so hopefully this will help you avoid something that will ruin your account ruin a sale cost you money or in the end cost you your eBay career or your business so let's start with the not so serious the 10 not so serious number 10 and then we'll work our way up to the number one um, big mistake that could really really hurt you that's more serious more severe so let's get rolling guys Okay, guys, so the number 10 mistake that I, I get this every day, I, a dozen times a day, and it's so easy to fix, and it's so easy to not make this mistake, and it is folks that are undercalculating or not calculating correctly the cost of shipping on an item, either when they price the item, list the item, or actually go to ship the item. Um, basically, what I mean by this is let's say your item weighs 13 or 14 ounces, and you put it at one pound and you print a label out and it costs you six dollars when you could have printed it for three dollars or when you're listing an item or buying an item you believe it weighs 13 ounces is going to cost you two or three bucks to ship instead it weighs two pounds and you all of a sudden have eight dollars tied up in shipping and you paid too much for it or you didn't make enough profit you didn't list it high enough whatever the case might be not calculating shipping correctly based on weight is a really really easy thing to fix and it's a bad mistake to make and it's usually a beginner mistake after a little while people learn and it's as simple of a mistake to fix as having this this 50 pound Accutech digital tabletop scale that you can turn on you can set to zero you can set it on your desk pretty simple this scale will save you so much money, so much time, so much headache, and will stop the number 10 mistake on our list. The other thing that you have to do to, mistake, to fix this mistake is when you're outsourcing, start getting a feel for how heavy something is. Pick it up and know that this is about 10 to 12 ounces, it's first class. Or pick up said item and know that this item is this is pretty heavy. It's over a pound. It's going to cost me six or seven dollars. Assume the worst and know that you're going to have to be into it for that much shipping cost and know that that's what you need to base your purchase price off of. So that's our number 10 mistake is miscalculating shipping costs on items. Very easy to fix. That's why it's down at the bottom of our list is number 10. It's a common mistake. It happens every day. People do it all the time. But it's so, so easy to fix, and that's why I put it at number 10. Not a serious mistake, and if you make this mistake, you're only going to cost yourself a couple bucks. You can quickly fix it before you do too much damage. Okay, mistake number nine, which is a serious mistake that people make, but in the end of the day, the only thing it will cost you is shipping money if you make this mistake. And it is accidentally allowing international shipping on your listings, not through the eBay Global Shipping Program. For those of you that are in the USA, this is a big mistake. Um, and it's happened to me a long time ago. Now I'm certain that every time I create a listing or we create listings, it is enabled through the global shipping program. Um, otherwise, you could get an order for an item that you sold for 10 bucks with free shipping that needs to ship to Spain and shipping's 20 bucks and now you're out all that money um, because you allowed shipping directly through the international. So again, it's another shipping mistake that can be easily avoided. It won't get your account suspended. It won't put you out of business, but it will cost you some money, you know, 10, 20, 30 dollars if you make this mistake because you don't want to cancel the order. You want to process it. You know, if you have a big account with a lot of feedback, you certainly could cancel it and explain it to the customer and hope that you don't get, you know, negative feedback or a ding or whatever. But not making sure that you have that global shipping tab checked is a mistake that a lot of people make. And I get emails and messages about what they should do. And I never recommend canceling an order ever. I don't think it's a good idea. Process the order, ship it, take the hit of $10, $15, and move on. 
Um, in the meantime, don't make the mistake again. So that's mistake number nine that I see a lot of people make every day. I see it all the time. All right, mistake number eight. This is a serious mistake and it can cost you feedback. It can cost you money. It can cost you shipping. So let's say that you sold items and a lot of people sell similar items, but even if they're not similar, you just sold two items. You sold two t-shirts and you pull those two t-shirts and you sit those two t-shirts down, but somehow you accidentally set them down on the wrong label. Now this person is going to get this t-shirt and this person is going to get this t-shirt. We have done it. We have swapped orders on accident simply by mistakenly putting the wrong label or the wrong item into the wrong envelope. It happens. So very, very carefully make sure, and we do it, we write on the bottom, we write highlighters, we double, triple check our items. Now, this won't necessarily put you out of business or get you suspended, but it can get you two negatives because two people are going to get the wrong items. Um, it could get you no negatives. They might be happy. You might need to just call them and pay for two more labels, $3, $3, 6 bucks, to have them ship them to each other. Mail this person a label, email this person a label, and say, I'm very sorry. Can you please return this? Yours is on the way. I'm very sorry. Please return this. You're on the way. Boop. They ship them to each other. They don't even have to ship back to you because you want to save time, save money. Just have them ship them to each other. Um, but it is a big mistake, and it can cost you time, trouble, and it could end up getting you negative feedback from those customers. So it's something you want to make sure. If you're packing multiple orders a day, multiple items, especially if they're similar items, make sure you put the right item in the right package with the right label every single time, guys. Don't mess them up. Don't crisscross them. And even if you think you've got it right, double check it, triple check it. We look over everything that we do. It's a mistake you don't want to make. It's a huge headache, and we have made that mistake. We haven't made it in a very long time because we've worked all of these kinks out and that's why I'm giving you guys this list of mistakes that I see a ton from people and how to handle them I'm giving you guys the answers don't make these mistakes all right let's keep rolling along number seven on the top eBay mistakes that I see people make every single day and this is a big one that everybody's done everybody's guilty of it and it shouldn't happen but it happens and that is not properly or fully describing your items it is the reason that people open not as described item cases that's why it exists on eBay you forgot a rip or a stain or a tear or a missing item you put the wrong color you didn't put the size you whatever it is you didn't describe the item properly it happens all the time I have a white wireless mouse for sale no you have a black and silver one it's not white it's black and silver customer gets it and it is wrong you have a large polo shirt no you have a medium this is not a large it is a medium Whatever the reason, not describing items is very, very easy to fix. And at worst, it's just going to cost you a return, return money, and possibly a negative feedback, which is very important. So again, not at the top of our list in seriousness. It's not going to get you thrown off eBay unless you only have a couple sales. But very important that you describe your items properly. It's okay every once in a blue moon to have one that might have slipped through the cracks. But you don't want to make a habit of having items not as described. Because if you get too many not as items not as described item cases and returns it will hurt your metrics and eventually you will fall below seller standard and that can cause you to lose your account so make sure you're describing your items correctly guys take good photos double check the descriptions make sure you check the sizes the colors the style the brand the model the serial number whatever it is double and triple check it and you will cut down on all those items not as described cases we get one a week with thousands of items going out of here a month we get one or two maybe three or four a month at most so make sure you guys really check your items before you hit that submit post button number six is one that a lot of people aren't going to know about not going to realize and it's probably not as big of a mistake to make but it can certainly cost you a lot of money and it can tick off a customer if you do it wrong um mistyping counter offers if somebody makes you a best offer and you accidentally mistype a counter offer let's say you list an item for a hundred bucks and a customer offers you uh i don't know sixty dollars and you say eh, i want to get 75 out of them and you accidentally type seven dollars and fifty cents and they accept the offer you are out all that money you are binded to ship them that item for seven dollars and fifty cents now you can cancel the order but we're right back to receiving negative feedback uh getting a cancel order uh, ding against your metric a whole lot of problems ticking off a customer you got a lot of issues if you mistakenly type a counter offer and then want to cancel it so you have to fulfill that order you're going to lose a lot of money or you're going to lose a lot of metrics take your pick so it's pretty bad which is why i put it a little higher on the list than the rest of them 
it's debatable, but it's a big, big mistake to mess up the counteroffer screen um, or accidentally accept an offer that you didn't want to accept because then you've got a moral dilemma of accepting it, losing the money and shipping the item, or canceling the order and taking the metric hit and the feedback hit. Neither one is good, so make sure you don't make that mistake. If you're on a best offer or a counter offer screen, type slowly, check it over before you click agree, all that good stuff. As usual, make sure there's no mistakes. Okay, number six mistake I see people make on eBay a lot, which initially will cost you money, and not a lot of it, just uh, double shipping money, but it can turn out to cost you a lot of money and a lot of problems in the long run. So that mistake is combining order. So let's say somebody buys something from you um, on a Monday morning at like 11 a.m. And then you've already done your shipping. So you're like, okay, I'm going to print it out this afternoon and it'll go out tomorrow morning on Tuesday. Well, let's say later that night they buy another item from you. And the next morning you print that label out. So you've now got two labels, one for each. Now, you could have combined those labels and saved shipping money, which is partly a mistake if you didn't do that. You're costing money by not combining the orders. Well, the other problem is if you combine the orders and provide the same tracking number for each item in the same package, that customer could complain that they only got one of the other items if they're trying to scam you. And then you could be out the cost or the sale price of the second item because they could just say, oh, I only got one. Now, yes, I know you can compare compare the receipt weight and all those good things. But if a scammer wants to scam you, they're going to scam you. So combining orders for separate items that one customer has bought can be good to save you money, but it can also turn against you if they decide to scam you. And then that gives them an opening to leave negative feedback for the item they claim that they didn't get. So be very, very careful. It's along the same lines as the last uh, couple of of issues and mistakes, but be careful when combining orders. If somebody's got a lot of feedback or they're a regular customer, or they look like a good person, you can certainly combine the orders. Um, but if it's somebody that's iffy or has little feedback or whatever it is, it might be better to just spend the extra $3 to mail the item separately because you intended to do that anyways. It's just lucky that they bought them together and you can save money by combining them. But is it worth losing out on the sale price of one item if they claim they didn't get it? Make sure you use your gut and think about that before you combine uh, combine orders, or shipping labels at least, because um, it can certainly turn against you. I've had it happen where somebody claims they didn't get the second item. We absolutely pack them together. They scanned me. They got away with that $20 for that item, and they left us negative feedback that I had to fight to get rid of. So make sure you have a good customer before you do it. Okay, we're moving right along to the number four mistake, four, that I see people make on eBay all the time, and this happens to me a lot. I count, I always count. When you print a shipping label and it comes up on your screen and you press that print button, make sure that label spits out of the printer. It could for any reason get jammed. It could not reach the signal. It could be that you didn't press the button like you thought you did and you just closed the label out. If that label doesn't print and you don't have the label in front of you, you're not going to know that that iPod or that shirt or that shoes was supposed to ship. You've got no label. This item's just going to sit on your shelf. You have no idea it's supposed to ship out. About three or four four days later, that customer is going to email you, message you, whatever, and say, hey, I never got my item. You're going to go back and look at the shipping label, the tracking number, and you're going to see that it was printed, but that it never went out the door. And you're going to say, well, what happened? Then you're going to go to the shelf. You're going to find the item, and you're going to say, oh my god, the label never printed. You're going to message the customer and say it's on the way, and hopefully they're very understanding, and they don't leave you negative feedback or don't open a case for item not received. It happens all the time. More than you would think that printers mess up, Wi-Fi signals fail, labels don't print, and items don't go out the door. Make sure you are pressing that print button and that the item label is actually coming out of the printer so that you know to ship it. It's a huge mistake, and I see people make it all the time, and we are guilty even recently of forgetting an item. Luckily, I found it the next day. I realized it, and it went out the door. I just happened to remember, hey, that item sold. Why didn't it go out the door? I looked at the tracking number. Tracking number showed that it had been created but never scanned, which means we didn't hand it to the USPS guy, which means the label was here. We didn't have the label. I ultimately determined it never printed out. I reprinted it, and I shipped the item one day late. I got a late ding. Again, it hurts your metrics because you get a late shipment. But 
I have so many that that one was okay. I emailed the customer right away and said, hey, your item went out one day too late. Uh, it never printed. We're very sorry. He was totally cool with it. No big deal. But it could turn out badly. So always make sure your labels print. Always, always, always. All right, guys, we're getting to the top of the list. This is number three. The number three mistake that I see a lot of eBayers, sell, eBayers sellers make, and that is overselling your items. That means accidentally relisting an item. Accidentally putting a four when you only have three. Accidentally selling similar and forgetting to adjust the quantity. You had five, you sold two, leaving you three, and you hit sell similar, and it posts five back up, and you sell five, and now you're short two. Do not oversell items. There is no way to fix this if you do it. The only thing you can do is is go on eBay and buy or Amazon and buy the same item and have it shipped to your customer to fill the order. It's called drop shipping. I don't recommend it, but in a tight squeeze, you can definitely do that to fix it. Otherwise, you're going to be canceling and refunding multiple orders, which is going to give you dings against your canceled order metrics it's also going to allow that customer to leave you negative feedback for canceling it can cause a lot of problems one mistakenly listed item that you oversell by two or three or four items could cost you four negatives and four canceled in one day imagine if that happened imagine if you had 10 of something and you sold six and you had four left and you relisted it and it posted 10 again and you sold those you've now oversold six of those orders and if half of those people left you negative and you got dings, you'd have six canceled orders and three negatives in one day. Be very careful about selling similar, relisting items, and putting in quantities of items. If you only have one of something, you're probably okay. But if you're listing quantities of things, be very, very careful how you do it. Make sure you have the number of items that you are listing each and every time. Otherwise, it could be a disaster to your account. It could cause you to drop under seller standard and it could put your account in a lot of trouble. So make sure that you're not making the mistake of overselling merchandise. All right, guys, mistake number two, and it's a big one. Please pay attention to this. I get asked this daily, three times a day, 10 times a day, emails out the wazoo about this. Do not drop ship merchandise. The number two mistake that I see eBay sellers and Amazon sellers make is drop shipping merchandise. And I don't mean mistakes with drop shipped merchandise. I mean drop shipping period. So for those of you that don't know what a drop shipped piece of merchandise is, I'm going to do a quick little um, description so that you understand. Let's say that you find a supplier in China, in Brazil, in Florida, wherever they are. They tell you, I've got these wonderful crown royal bags for sale. They're a buck a piece. And you say, well, wow, I can sell those things for $10 a piece. I'd like to buy some. And he says, wonderful. I've got a thousand of them. And you say, "Whoa, wow. Okay, I'm going to list this item. You take the photos, and he's over here, and you're the eBay seller in the middle, and you go ahead and you list 100 of them at 10 bucks a piece. Great, you're going to make some profit. Well, you're here in the middle. All of a sudden, your buyer appears over here, and he says, Hey, Casey, I love those Crown Royal bags you got listed for 10 bucks a piece. I'll take 10 of them. 100 bucks and you say wow i'm gonna buy them from my supplier for 10 bucks sweet so your buyer places an order on ebay and hits buy it now quantity 10 and whoop shoots you over 100 bucks you call up your guy and you're like hey i'd like to order 10 of these and he goes oh sorry we sold out now you've got a buyer that's already paid you and put an order in and you can't fill the order that's drop shipping normally your buyer wouldn't be out he would say okay 10 are on the way and you'd give him this guy's shipping label instead of your own, it would jump over you and it would ship right to your customer instead of shipping to you, and you'd have a fulfilled order. That's why we don't drop ship. You never know when stock is gonna run out, or your buyer could say, oh, Casey, you know what? We don't have the green ones anymore. We only have red ones. My customer order green ones. Sorry, can't help you. Well, guess what? It's not this guy that's in trouble. It's you. You can't fill the order. You have to cancel the order. You have to give this guy a refund, and you're going to get the negative feedback. It is your account that is at risk when you drop ship. If for any reason he runs out of stock, he doesn't have the color, if he does have it and he ships it to this guy and it's counterfeit or it's crap material, 
any number of things can happen when you drop ship and you are not handling the merchandise to see it yourself and know that it is physically in stock, the right amount, the right color, the right size, it's not counterfeit. There are so many things that can go wrong with drop shipping. Now, don't get me wrong. I know there are a lot of people that are going to give me hate for this and they're going to say they make a great living drop shipping. And you know what? Congratulations. You have been lucky. Very lucky. I will not risk my account on material that I do not own, ever. eBay used to have a policy, and I believe it's probably still in their terms of service, that if you don't own it, you are not supposed to be listing it on the account. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's still part of eBay's policy. It may not be. It was for many years. What if you done the same thing and listed 100 of these, and you sold all 100 of them overnight to 100 individuals? You now have to cancel a hundred orders because your guy doesn't have any more, doesn't have the right ones, and you have to issue a hundred refunds. You could end up with a hundred negative feedbacks and a hundred canceled transactions. Your account will be closed by the time you wake up in the morning. I promise you. Drop shipping is something we will not do here. No, no, no. If I'm going to sell these, I'll place the order myself and have these shipped to me and then I will sell them. Once they're in my hands, ready to go, I've confirmed they are what they are. I know they're good. I know they're not counterfeit. I know they're the right size, the right color, everything, rather than have them ship from this guy to this guy. Why do people try to drop ship? Let me tell you why. They don't have to spend the money to buy the merchandise. This customer pays them. They use his money to pay this guy, and it goes to them. It's a quick, easy way to make money without putting up your own money. But you know what else it is? It's lazy and it's cheap. Stop doing it buy the merchandise, have it shipped into your building, your office, your house, you inspect the goods, and then you sell it. If they're no good, ship it back and get your money back on PayPal. Pay that guy with PayPal and do the same thing that everybody else does. Don't be lazy and try to take the short way out. This business is not for you if that's how you think you're going to make money. I absolutely hate people that drop ship. I cannot stand it. It drives me insane. It makes me want to scream. Buy it and bring it in yourself, then sell it. Do not drop ship. Mistake number two, I've seen dozens of people lose their accounts off of trying to cut corners, be cheap, and do things the quick, easy way rather than do the work it takes to make the real money. Don't do it, guys. Just don't drop ship. If you disagree with me, knock yourself out, but please don't come cry to me when your account gets suspended because you made 100 deals that worked out and the one deal that didn't work out cost you your account. My opinion, guys. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm not, but if you do it, best of luck to you. Okay, now that I take a deep breath, we are on to my number one mistake that I see eBayers make. And this is a mistake that eBayers make that they don't even know is a mistake. And I didn't know for a long time. It happened to me recently. I put it out in a Facebook group and uh, I got educated about it. And that is Vero trademarked items. What does that mean? A lot of companies own trademark on items that they don't allow to be sold on eBay or they don't like to be sold on eBay. And if they see you selling those items, they will contact eBay and have the items removed. If you get caught doing it more than once, and I've seen it happen on people get caught doing it twice or three or four or five times. I've seen it happen to people doing it twice and I've seen it happen to people that have made it 20 times. They will suspend your account. Basically, there are lists and lists of companies and trademarks that you just can't sell on eBay. I don't know them all. I know some of them. Otterbox is a very bad company. You can sell Otterbox as uses, used, but if you sell them brand new, they are going to come after you. I recommend not selling Otterbox. Otterbox is a big, big company that will come after your account on eBay for selling their merchandise. The word onesie, onesie, like a baby onesie, is not allowed to be used. This is where I got caught. We sold some baby clothes and I posted that they were onesies. Gerber, the Gerber company that you all know, the Gerber baby food, they own the rights to the word onesie. It is trademarked. You cannot use that without their permission. If they see that you've listed an item using the one word onesie, they will contact eBay and they will copyright it and remove your listing and you will get a warning from eBay. I got that warning. It was probably like six months ago. I have never listed another onesie again. I do not want to lose my account. They'll always give you the benefit of the doubt. If you do it again, they're going to sue you. They will sue you. I'm not being dramatic or drama queen or exaggerating. If they catch you again, you will get a cease and desist letter in the mail and they will sue you. Same goes for the word Velcro. The owners... <coughs> excuse me guys the owners of the word velcro and i'd have to look it up but whoever trademarked and created velcro and patented it does not want it sold on ebay if you use the word velcro in your title or in the 
photos, or in your description, you can get your account suspended. It'll remove the item and give you a chance. But if you do it or you have multiples, they'll come after you and they will sue you as well. So be very careful. I would say if you're a new seller, other than avoiding Otterbox, Velcro, and Onesie, go on eBay and do some Google searches for some lists of items that people have reported as being Vero, V-E-R-O, trademarked, and, um, and make sure not to list those items or sell those items. I will try to do some research and add some items to this description box by tomorrow or the next day. So when you're watching this video in the future, um, hopefully I've added some links to some items to avoid. Um, if I can find any, I'll do my best guys. But that is my number one thing. It is, it is not only going to get your account suspended, it can get you sued, which is, it's crappy. I mean, seriously, we can't sell stuff with Velcro. Find another word, misspell it, or just say attachable shoe thingies. Whatever you got to do, don't use that word. Don't use the word onesie and don't sell Otterboxes brand new. You can sell them used if you have a good account. Don't sell them brand new. I'm not saying Otterbox can't come after you for selling them used, but I don't think I've seen anyone get in trouble for used ones yet. Yes, there are other sellers selling Velcro, selling onesies, and selling otter boxes. They will get caught. They can't catch everyone, but they will get caught eventually. And if they don't, they're just pure lucky. Don't bet your account on being lucky. So, that's my number one mistake not to make on eBay. Alright guys, thanks for watching the video. These are 10 mistakes that you should not make on eBay, and you should definitely not make them anymore because I have told you guys not to make them and I've told you how to avoid them and I told you how to fix them. So if you watch this video and you make these mistakes, shame on you. Anyways, with that being said, I've got two announcements to make. Announcement number one is that my Q&A show is going to move to Thursday. As you guys have seen in the last couple Q&As, we go out on Fridays. We always have things planned. It just seems to work out that way. Thursday is a day we are home all night or Kate is out and I am home. Um, I'm going to do Q&As on Thursday. Just the way it is. I apologize if that messes with anybody. If you can't watch me live on Thursday, then watch it on Friday after it's been recorded. It's all the same. I love for you guys to be live. Uh, if you can't be live, then watch it record it. It's all the same to me. And if you want to get a question in, leave it on a comment the week before, and I'll message or comment or email back to you. Or I'll include it in the video on Thursday, and then you can watch me answer it whenever you have a chance to watch. Uh, that's announcement number one. Q&A moving to Thursday, same time, 9 p.m. Eastern time, Q&A Thursday, 9 p.m. Uh, on, on uh, Thursday nights now. Announcement number two is that I really appreciate everybody who watched the live show last week on Friday. Lindy was awesome. I'm going to be on her channel soon. Don't have a date and time for you yet. I will ask her tonight, tomorrow, and we will get that set for you guys. So look out for me being over on Lindy Glenn's channel. You guys went and subscribed to her channel. I think she got over 200 subscribers in one night. So thank you so much for that, guys. I love you guys for that. Uh, I love you guys supporting other channels and always coming back to watch my videos. Make sure to check out some of the old videos if you missed any. Um, a lot of good content um, that you can check out on this channel if you want to binge watch or, uh, or if you missed anything. Um, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, if you're new. I appreciate that as well, and I appreciate you checking it out and joining me. Um, a lot of new videos coming up, a lot of new ideas. Some of them I got from you guys, so thank you. You can always comment or email. My email is down in the description box, along with my social media if you want to go follow me over there. I post on Instagram and Twitter daily, so a lot of good uh, items that I'm out buying from the hauls, things that you don't see here on the YouTube channel, I post there sometimes. So I really appreciate all you guys. You guys are the best. Thank you for sticking with me. Thanks for watching even the bad videos. Thanks for watching the good videos. Thanks for your comments, positive, negatives, all that good stuff. I'm still responding to as many as I can, so I will get to them. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to get this video up, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Fresh week, fresh new buying, fresh new selling, Monday morning. Let's knock it out of the park this week, guys. Let's make a lot of money, and I'll see you tomorrow afternoon. Have a great night.